Keep Spook still, fans. Matty P, Shannon White. You might be sick of us. We're not sick of each other. So <laughs> if we're talking Steelers, you're getting the content. Um, but, but Shannon, it's been an interesting draft process. We're post senior ball now. All the names are coming out. Zach Powers Johnson is like rocketing up the book. Jackson Powers Johnson. I keep saying Zach. I keep merging Zach Frazier and Jackson Powers Johnson. I did a show the other day and I realized halfway through the show, I'm blending the two blokes together, right? I'm too close to the center position. Um, but I need to get centered on the names of the center. Anyway, yes, yes. Uh, the way I'm trying to refer to him now, so that you're not, you know, it's not confusing for anyone out there. I saw someone comment in an NFL video calling him JPJ. No, so I'm calling no, him, no. I'm, That's what I'm you call Julian Porter Jr. JPJ2. Oh, oh, okay, okay. You're right. So I'm calling him JPJ2, right? Because he'll be the second, and not 2.0 because he's not a cornerback, but I'm calling him JPJ2, right? If he, if the Steelers draft him, I'll call him JPJ0.5 because he's got the C, <laughs> not the yeah. CB, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, but anyway, JPJ2 is rocketing up the boards to the point now I'm like, if the Steelers might even have to trade up to get the, the, the bloody bloke. Uh, but that could be stuff for Zach Frazier. I know you've been the Zach Frazier advocate um, as well. But I know you've had a chance to dive into some more prospects. I've talked a lot about prospects. So I'm keen to find out from you and, and feed off that uh, all good things about the draft prospects. What are you seeing this week? Who's rocking up your board? Who's grabbing your attention? You are the man that's predicted many draft picks, including um, Alex Heisman. So who are you liking out there? Who's taking the share of mind? Who do still fans need to be getting on board with? Um, and also, the other, thing I'll, the other thing I'll say is like, you know, a lot of people go, oh, I don't want to fall in love with prospects. Steelers don't draft them. But it's important to be aware of those prospects. Number one, yes. we know Mike yes. Tomlin and picking them up in free agency. But number two, knowing what they will mean if another team drafts them. I mean, the amount of players like Travis Jones, for example, one of my draft crushes two years ago. He's with the he's with the Ravens. It's important because it helps me understand when the Steelers are playing the Ravens. I know they've got a massive yeah. defensive tackle who can move inside linemen. I know that Mason Cole is never going to be the guy to block up against him. Like so, these are the interesting things. But anyway, I'll shut up. Who's taking the share of mine for you right now in the in the draft prospects for twenty twenty four? I love what you said though. Before I start on that, about you knowing what they're like for other teams, which will be an opponent. And that we also got to remember, Tomlin loves to get the guys on their second contract. Yeah. Somebody else put the time in, developing all that. They hit free agency. Tom was like, come on over. So, <laughs> hey, I love it. I love it. Um, I, I want to start out with the center because, you know, I'm I'm the – I love yeah, the round can. bellies. You love the round bellies. I, yeah. I love the center position. And it's past time for the Steelers to solidify that with a young stud that will be the alpha on this line. Um. I'm so happy that Jackson Powers Johnson, and I say his full name, uh, that he's doing so well because that means that the other somebody who's really wanting a center will shoot for him first because my highest rated center is Zach Frazier. But at the senior bowl, they listed Jackson Powers, um, I mean, Powers Johnson, they listed him at 6'3", 335 to 340. Yeah. And if you see him, he's real top heavy. Yeah. Now, he turned out he was a little under 6'2. And yeah. he has 31 something inch arms. Yeah. Now, uh, when you co combine that lack of length with that much weight, and everybody's like, oh, he's got a great anchor and he moves well, but he he will not have longevity. And and the other thing I will just throw in as well. When he recorded those measurements, to me, and, the un and we want to talk about Zach Fraser, to yeah. me, Cedric Van Pran went up the went up the, the in terms of I think. Because I don't think he's measured yet, but Van yeah, Pran but, uh, is, he's, he looks longer. He yeah, but he's longer. I think he's listed six four, so yeah. he'll probably be closer to that. Because he's also at Georgia, and, and their guys usually are pretty accurate. Yeah, you know, so uh, I agree. I agree. Um, I don't have nothing against um, Powers Johnson, but Frazier's the guy. Now, I, I want to go into why, because, yes, I'm his hype man. Uh, but he is a local kid, 45 minutes from Pittsburgh. He is a multi-time All-American high school wrestler, state champion football player, always been a center. He studies the all-time grades. Guess who else did? Creed Humphrey. 
Guess who else was a great wrestler? Creed Humphrey. Guess who else? Uh, it was just a lifer at the position. Creed Humphrey. Now, on top of all that, Z- Zach Frazier is a much better athlete than people realize. Yeah, he will. He true. will test what he can. Now, it was a broken leg, not the high, not the knee, and not the hamstring that the first two reports. It turns out it was a broken leg, so he's already going to the senior bowl. He couldn't participate, but he's definitely going to be running and testing by pro day. At the combine, he's wanting to do as much as he can. This kid, when he was young, was in the weight room. They took their garage and made it into a really nice facility. And he, you watch, I predicted 35 to 38 reps. Uh, great wow. upper body strength. Three, he, he measured in just a tad under 6'3". 32 and three eighths arms, if I remember right, and 315 to 318 pounds. So he has got a athletic build. He's got strong anchor, incredible upper body strength, a great punch, quick hands, you know, all these things that we're looking for. Mm. But he is a team first player. Mm. That is going to fit with the Steelers culture. He wants to be a Steeler. He's a Steeler fan. Those are the guys, just like Alex Highsmith. He loved the Steelers. His family loved the Steelers, and he got to be a Steeler, and you see the connection. One more thing. Zach Frazier, married man, young married man of character. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's won multiple awards at WVU. He is an academic All-American. So you put him in any scheme, he'll learn it like that. He's yeah. bright. He's smart. Uh, he is the perfect prospect for the Pittsburgh Steelers at a huge area of need this year. Yeah. So I am all on the Zach Fraser train, baby. I'm the hype man. Now, I love it. Now you told me about oh, a can I ask you one thing about center because I think yes, there's yes, divergence yes. in center. I know the Steelers interviewed Matt Lee from Miami, or they had it through. I think when I had quite a late round pick on him, but that might be the case. He's more of a mid round guy. He's blocking great. I know we all don't like PFF, but, uh, but I, I take PFF for if they're going to measure a grade, at least you can look at variances between grades. His yeah. blocking grade was like out of this world. Like top, I think he was one of the top centers in the league for his blocking, like, sorry, in college football for his blocking grade. Um, yeah. Like, literally, he was number 14. Yeah, he was the second best center behind Meyer um, of UTP, um, University of Texas, El Paso. Um, yeah, he was literally behind there. Yeah, behind then behind the Jackson Powers Johnson. So he was the third best center. Do you know, like, do you think this guy's at all on the mix? I mean, the Steelers have interviewed him as well, or do you think that's what we're going to have to see with the draft process? Just because I'm just interested because they did interview him, and his, his stats aren't bad. I, I think it's going to depend... If I, I know there's a lot of other fans that agree with me, I'm really obsessed on a center, a young stud, and there's three yeah. of them in this draft. Yeah, yeah. True, now true. there's other guys, as likely, who is uh could be an upgrade over Mason Cole. Yeah, and as you know, you can develop to you know, you don't know what he can be, but mm-hmm. I know what Frazier can be, yeah, that's and what what powers Johnson and Van Braun for that matter. So that, I've been focusing on those three dudes. But if the Steelers are like, we're going to go tackle and linebacker, inside linebacker, which is something we need to focus on. Yeah. If they decide to do that, they're going to miss those first, first three guys. Then Lee comes into the equation. Yeah, I like that thinking. Totally agree. All right. I like it. Uh, yeah, I think there's someone I think there's someone else you really Oh, like. I, I, you told me about this kid. And, and I was like, I got to remember Corley. 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 Because I was not familiar with him. And so I go and I do just a quick dive. And uh, another competitor I'm not going to name uh, have been doing draft prospects each day. And they had done one on him and had some video. And and I'm like, oh, my God. I, I love this kid. He's Heinz Ward 2.0. I mean, similar height, yep. the similar weight, very physical, yep. very good yak yards. Now, in college, he was 
used a lot because of his yard ability. He was used a lot of quick passing and screens. And well, he he plays played ninety one point six percent according to PFF of his and of his college career in the slot. Exactly, but wow. in in the senior bowl they started using him and wow. giving him more of a round tree, and he looks. I mean, yep. when Heinz Ward was drafted, I remember. I remember thinking, I watched him play in Georgia, and I'm like, why did they pick him? Because he was a wide receiver. He was a quarterback first. Yeah. And I said, he's too short to play quarterback. He's he's not a running back, really. His his body type doesn't fit. Well, we see what you could do with that body type. And Corley is like that. And he's- you you told me about him, and I, I'm highly impressed. And I talked about him before. I I started talking about Cooley before the senior ball started, before he was yes. top 10 wins yeah, yeah, back did, in Jeremiah yeah. at the practice. This guy, 8.2 average yak yards per reception. I love it. I love the it. guy, like, has – like, his total yak yards caught, caught in PFF is, like, 2,100, like, out of, I think, overall his total – like, uh, compared to his total yards. I mean, this guy is, like – out of yeah, so out of his 3,000 yards, 2,100. I come from Yak. So literally like almost 70% of his total yardage is just pure Yak yards. The guy can absolutely block. He's got blocking grades like oh, yeah. 68, 9. He's strong. Oh. He's a running back build. Running back build, yeah. that I, I call him, the way I wanted to describe him, and it's hard because it's not like I sit there and watch Western Kentucky football all the time. I wanted to call him like a, a wide receiver in a running back's body. Yeah, that's kind of, that, that's, that's kind his of build. Hard. That's his dimensions. Yeah. Well, you know they were talking about him, and some they were comparing him to Curtis Samuels. Yeah. Uh, and, and Curtis Samuels at one time had that quicks, you know, and and I think he's going to run better. I think he said he can run a four three something. I, I, say, I, I could see a four three eight. Yeah, I, I mean high four three. He's like a four three eight or something. Yeah. But I'd like to see, you know, I see a lot of Hines Ward as I've said. But if, if you're going to compare him to a Samuels, I think he reminds me of a Debo Samuel in the fact that once he catches it, then you're in trouble. That well, And that's exactly what Daniel Jeremiah said in a podcast after the Senior Bowl. He was like, this guy is the next Debo Samuel. Oh, you don't tackle him one-on-one. I mean, it, he, he drags you. And I just think you put a guy like – the problem is this guy's going to be a top 22 pick. Like, he's a better prospect coming out to me than Addison. People will shoot me. Shoot you me. think he's a top 22? I do. He's in, he's, he's. I he's mean, do you there. think that that's how the scouts are looking at him? I, See, think, I, I think. I, I think he'll like, be drafted in the top 22 to 20. I mean, there's a lot of good wide receivers. But yeah, I see. I think they like, the NFL is obsessed with those big body, tall, long guys. I think he's going to fall in the second round. Well, then he'll have it. It'll be like a Joey Porter. He 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 will go in the top thirty-five picks. No, no. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Absolutely. Like, and the thing though is, once once his size runs a four three eight at the oh yeah, he runs a yeah, 4, 3, yeah. 8 at the combine. Like, hey, Debo Samuels didn't run a four three eight. Let's say that, that's <laughs> why I'm, some team is going to go. Oh my! Like, I sit there and go in my steel of brain when I saw him. Him and George Pickens with Pat oh yeah, Henry. oh my, and Warren and Najee. I'm like oh, like because that you think about the capability in an Arthur Smith offense when you've got a wide receiver that big bodied, then you yeah. can have like George Pickens out there running a slant, and you've got Freemuth there, and then you've got Najee or Warren or both on the field. Like the heavy set yeah. that you can do, and you talk about the whole sweeps. And I know every, every Steel fans probably over sweep game. But this guy in the sweep game around the edge, yeah. get him the ball. Small, on Just a small get him court. the ball. Yeah, I'm like this guy. Yeah, it's exactly it. having the ball in every hands. And I, I'm just saying, in my Madden franchise right now, I'm 2026. 20, this guy's on the Baltimore Ravens, and he obliterated me the other. Oh, night. I don't want him I, on the Ravens. I, I'm actually very cranky about <laughs> Malachi Crawley right now. He obliterated me. But you know, but, you, know you think about it, picking up. You know, they're gonna need to get a free agent because yeah. they need multiple. You get a free agent like Jennings with Pickens, with Corley in the slot. I mean, you're revamping that receiver room like that. And I don't know if you remember my draft crush or one of them last year. I love Jonathan Mingo you for did. the same reason. 
Now, he went to a really bad Panthers offense. Yeah. But that is what I'm talking about. Mingo, if you get him in the right offense, he's going to put up numbers. Well, and uh, and I think Corley, it, it could be better than Mingo. Would you trade Deontay Johnson? For, yes. Would you trade Deontay Johnson? Yes. And a, <laughs> and a third next year to jump back into the second this year? Yes. Because I don't think Johnson Johnson is worth a second. I think he's worth a third. So you yeah. trade effectively two third round picks to get back in the second and get Cooley. I don't know if you heard me the other times, but yes. Yeah. I, was, no, <laughs> I, I really, want to make sure. Really, I want to make sure we had like it was it was like the auction. It was going, going, yeah. gone, three hammers. Here, here's the thing about it. It's not that I don't like Johnson, is he's a poor fit for this yeah. offense. Yeah. Then we we have to remember. I had a guy this week was like, well, I sure hate to see this offense without Johnson. He's the only guy that could get open. I said in Matt Canada's offense, nobody could get open. He had to get open in two to three seconds every time, you know, so he was very valuable. But in a quality offense, you can scheme, scheme guys open. And so, yes, he will not be that valuable no more because especially he's not a good blocker. So, yes. I think they need to trade him, not just do I want them to trade him. They need to. Yeah, I love it. I love it. But well, now, I... one more quick. What, linebackers. I, I've, I've been watching, and everybody's, you know, Trotter. and, and I love I'm not on Trotter. You know, I'm not on the Trotter. Know, they, they everybody loves – well, Big G does. And everybody you know, loves his lineage. Well, well Big and, P, Big P doesn't. <laughs> yes. So, but I was reading them today – there's articles about how much the Steelers love Zach Fraser. Well, they also love Edrigan Cooper from Texas A&M. Uh, that's, I, that's I the, love the guy's stats. I just that's gonna... the rumor. Now I started, so I started paying more attention, and to Peyton Wilson or Wilson. Peyton, I'm a big Peyton. I'm a big Peyton Wilson fan. I'm a big Peyton Wilson. Fan. And I see the fit for these guys. Um, I also like Cedric Gray. I do like Cedric Gray too. Yeah, and he, I think he's going to be available more in the middle there, yeah. which which would be good. Um, so, I, again, I'd like to – they've got to get the young guy in that center to build around. They've always had that when they have a dominant defense, and they don't have it. They don't know what they're going to do with Alexander. You know, how – you know, will he be ready to sign or to start playing, you know, with that injury? Holcomb, again, he can miss some time. So – the Steelers are going to have to probably do a free agent and a draft pick at linebacker as well. Yeah, totally. There's also a guy. Um, but what do you not like about Cooper? I don't. Well, I actually love everything about Cooper. I just don't want to spend the twentieth pick on him. Well, I mean, again, no. When we're talking about this, ah, uh, he'll go for. He'll go. He's he's a top. I think. I know. I, I, he's a first, he's a first rounder. But, yeah, he's yeah. he's a first rounder. But to me. If Trotter drops, as they're saying, to early second, then there's a good chance Cooper could drop into the second, too. I think because they're devaluing inside linebackers. I think Cooper's ahead of, uh, I think Cooper's ahead of Trotter on the, but in a lot of scouting reports, he's number two. You know, there's a guy, I'm going to give you another name because I love giving you these names. Yes. Go out and look at, um, I've watched a lot of his tape, but his stats jumped off the board for me. He was at the same goal. Tyrese Knight out of University of Texas, El Paso. Yes. Go, go yes. check him out because he's a late guy that like, I'm like, ooh, ooh, this could be like a hidden, this could be a hidden thing. I do like Cedric Gray as well um, out of North Carolina. Um, there's a, there, This is actually quite a deep one. The guy that I really like though, only because I can trust the pedigree with the performance. You go say Eggenberg? No, I'm not going to – I'm actually – I'm not going to – How would you might say him when you said pedigree? <laughs> Colson. It's Colson. I, well, I, yeah, yeah. I'm on yeah. Junior Colson. I'm big-bodied, like – They win in the championship, him. you know, I mean. <laughs> but 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 he's played – like, the the quality people he has played – like, that's the thing. You can have a guy that, like – and that's what I think about Cooper at Texas A&M. I'm like, he's played against decent competition. But he, to me, he hasn't destroyed it every game. Whereas Colson has played week in, week out against the best guys in in, in the college football. Ever do? Yeah, he's an, and he's 
he's measured in like I think Trotter's measuring in at like early sixes, whereas Colson's like six two, six three. Like I want a big, I want a big MF, you know, and you know yeah. what I'm saying by yeah. that beast yeah. in the middle there. So when we've got to be able to tackle a running back like Derrick Henry and put him on his absolute behind. And I think you need a big guy. I don't want to, I don't want any more scared Devin Bushes, right? No, I want no, a guy that's no, yeah. I want a guy that walks out there and goes, I'm as big as the edge rushes next to me. I'm gonna belt this guy. That that's what I want. And that's the thing when we had him Vince Williams. He knew he could belt people. Yeah. Well, it was like uh another Williams. Last year I really liked Dorian Williams. Yes. And it's, and and I, I mean everybody talked about what a great cover he was. Well, it, he showed with the Bills, he was a physical tackler. And he was actually strong in the running game as well. So um you know, a guy, there's going to be some guys probably in the mid rounds that could be that answer, but that's going to be up to, you know, Con and him, they're going to turn over every stone to, to looking and, and they'll, they'll, they have their guys. But I just had to mention Cooper because that article today saying he was a, a one of the Steelers, they were enamored with him. Have they interviewed him or? Yes. Oh, multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, multiple I, times they interviewed him already. So yeah. and he said that they give him the impression that yeah they were definitely interested. So I just, I just yeah. But I, another I, guy that you mentioned to me uh, is the Williams safety, the kid out of yeah. Maine. We got to talk about Williams. I wanted to bring him up, but I didn't know if we had time. But everybody keeps saying that they want to change him to a linebacker. To me, he's a safety. So this is what I've been saying. I the like that safety. size and that length. They, this is what I keep saying, and I, and that's why I think the Steelers are a really interesting fit for him because he 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 did um, linebacker and safety drills at Senior Bowl. In yes. fact, he was listed as a linebacker, not as a safety. Yeah. And when I did the preview show on that on the channel, I was like, "The guy is a safety to me. Don't dump. Don't make him get bigger and be a linebacker. Use him in schematically sometimes at linebacker, like as an off the ball linebacker." But, yeah. like, he's a strong safety. And I'm like, you need that guy. And the thing about it, if you draft James Williams and you plan on keeping Kazi or the role of the th- – if you can play three safety sets with James Williams, oh, my God. Like, oh, my God. And I keep hearing people talk about Cameron Kitchens. I'm like, how can you watch the tape of Miami and Cameron Kitchens and not be, and oh, no, my no, God, look at the freaking yeah. nature next to yeah. him? Then this is why I call it the – if they draft him, the this is the Robert Hunt – Kevin Dotson 2.0 draft, yeah. right? Because everyone's sitting there looking at Robert Hunt while the Steelers are going, who's that guy over there? Yeah. Right. Like <laughs> so that's why I'm and I'm on I'm on this guy. Like he'll be six foot three to six foot five when he properly measures. He's gonna be upwards of two twelve. I think he's gonna be more like 218, 220. Like I'm saying 220, yeah. Yeah. Just I think he's more athletic than Terrell Edmonds and more capable. That's what I was getting ready to say. To me, I would only thing I was doing was envisioning him in Edmonds' role because I don't think he's going to be a splash guy either. No, but but he's going to knock people out. He's going to cover. <laughs> he's going to cover a ton of field. His range is sideline to sidelines, and he would free up Fitzpatrick to be Fitzpatrick. And know. this is this is why I want him because he frees up exactly yep. what you said there. Like, I love him. Like, if the Steelers go got, went him in the back of the second, I'd go, everyone can have a cry about it. He will fill a role and he will be cheap for a long time to come when he delivers. Like, if it, you know, because you think about what we spent on Terrell and we overdrafted Terrell and we've all talked about that for 50, for 50 billion years. But if you get this guy... Back end of day two, early day three, you are laughing. But my thing is, he I think he's going to have be a freak show at the combine. <laughs> I think so too. I bet he jumps out of the gym and, and puts up the big broad. He's going to do it all. So, uh, like to me, he's a top. He's an absolute top pros like a top prospect in terms of guys that I want. Um, but I'm hearing you know, more and more people mentioning him. I've been on him for over. I know, months. I know, but now you're hearing more and more people as they're starting to see him. Yeah. You know, and they're paying attention to who's that other guy. So, uh, but again, I think in the second round, that you know, man, there's just so many needs. 
But if you trade a player, trade who, back. Trade yeah, back. if you trade a little bit, you could get you some more picks. Well, that's going to wrap up all our content from the global perspective, boys in Shannon White and Matty P. I hope you enjoyed all the content we've got for you this weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl. We just, then, we, then it's all motoring ahead to combine, to draft process, to free agency. It's all kicking off. It's all going to be a very, very big month for the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right. Well, that's Matty P with Shannon White. As always, go Steelers. <laughs>